Photoshop Restoration 101 part the next. Now this photo here you can see is pretty much well pretty distressed. It's discoloured, there's bits missing, creased, bits missing, it's got patches where scrape or mouldy it's got mouldy or wet up here it's getting wet this is pretty common pretty common state for an oldish photo um, apart from color correction it also needs basically building it's quite a time consuming process so I'll go through um, the basic techniques I won't do it all for you because you don't want to sit and watch us draw and scribble um, but I'll show you the techniques anyway. Um, as before, work on a copy. So we've always got the original in the background. So to get a copy, we've got Control J. So what we'll do first is I'll take the tint off and make it black and white. Just label the layer there. Um, image adjustments, black and white. just makes it easier, we can't add the colour back in at the end, the tint back in at the end. Um, so now make another copy of that. Now what shall we do first? Uh, biggest things first, we'll replace this area here. Which although it's the biggest, it's probably the easiest. So just to keep it right, you don't have to do this thing with the label, it, it just makes things easier when you've got lots of layers, you know what's been done on what. So I'll call that filling in big chunk. Right, so if we look at that picture overall, we can guess at what used to be there. It's just a bit of the blank background. So we've got lots of undamaged background up here. So what we can do is copy what's up here, down here, by using the clone, bl clone brush, which in Photoshop is in this menu here. Come on, come on, show yourself. Why aren't my menus where well, there it is? There. Clone stamp. Ignore that. Now this round thing here is a paintbrush. And what we need to do is first select the area we want to copy from, which somewhere up here will do, you see there. You do that by pressing the Alt key on the keyboard. Select where we want, take the hand off the Alt key. Oh, I'll move down to where we want to scribble and you'll see the cross up there we are copying into the blank area with what is over the with what the cross is over and it's copying it exactly so you see we've got two dots there that's something you've got to be careful of but in this case, it doesn't really matter. Not at this instance anyway. I will show you how to get around that. Be careful because we're going on to his head. Um, see, I'm going up the side of his hair and we've got the, the side of the hairline I'm drawing with now. That's because we're taking an exact copy of what's up here. We don't want that. So what we'll do is find another place. Alt click again down there. Alt click, not Windows click, daft lad. Alt. Alt. There. And 
and we can do that to get rid of that crease that dot there so now you can see where we did have a gap before we've now got a nice filled in space there you see do 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 you can barely see the join and you can do you can apply that technique to all these areas around here you just look for an area that's close to what should be under the damaged area alt click it and then you go and doodle over the damage that's really quick um, the best type of brush for this I was using a hard edge brush it's better with a soft fuzzy edge so you don't get like a, a sharp edge to your adjustment that's just an experimental thing in an image like this, a black and white image like this, it doesn't really matter that much. I could show you later on a colour one that you do have to be more careful with this and this isn't actually the best technique to use if the background is textured but with it being plain we're just copying we're just copying grey on grey really move your uh, sample point around so you're not copying so you wouldn't like get see we've got some dots here you don't really want to copy that down here so you've got the dots repeating like a pattern that is the danger with the clone stamp um, down here as well we've got his jumper that's all basically one colour Take it from the top and the bottom. Now, if you see here, we've got a dark area which looks to be his sleeve. Now, if we copy from this and go straight up, it'll extend that dark line. It helps if you can identify lines like that and work with them instead of working against them because it keeps them, it keeps them continued onwards. But a lot of this is basically, you are, well, you are literally painting, painting back what's being destroyed. And the amount of time you take over this, how careful you are, is directly related to how good the finished image is. You see here he's got a collar. If you sample it up here, which is damage free and follow the line of the collar round you, you do it does help you get the detail still but these flat bits you just diddly do just round they are there um, this would be normally be that colour ish take it from the other side as well down here it's slightly lighter this area which looks like it's been mauled again just copy it in with the, uh, the grey flick to see what it was like before doot 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 do already you can see 100 percent improvement um, Notice I've left the face alone, but this mark up here, you can see, is going to be quite easy to fill over because it is just the colour of his head. So if we take the colour up there, which would be pretty similar, de -de -de. 
there we are, gone. Um, the rest of these marks are pretty easy because they don't go over any of the uh, any of the features. The marks that go through the eyes are murder to put right because you do literally have to redraw the eye. Um, it's all going through flat. Just run that parallel with these lip. Now you can see here, it's not exact. It's not the exact shadow. This is where the time comes in. This is what sorts out the men from the boys when they're doing this. I know I've slap dashed through it in what is it, five minutes, and we've got from that to that. But it's really just the same, I suppose, as painting, painting your sitting room. You can hide the colour on the walls where it's all flat, but once you get to the edges, that's when you've got to get your little brush out. And you start making the adjustments and the uh, getting at the minutiae of it, and that's what makes or breaks the picture or the room. You can, of course, this brush is massive. You you can't change the size of your brushes. And this is one of the areas where I'm working with a graphics tablet and a pen. It is a lot easier than working with a mouse. It's a hell of a lot easier than working with a mouse. because it does allow you that control. Um, you can of course zoom in. Get down with the nitty gritty. Select the brush again. No, select the uh, clone again. Make the brush smaller. just smooth away at these little bits. See that bit there, it's still... So let me put that, as I said, you've got to take your time with it. So we've gone from that to that, or from that to that, I should, I should say. There's still a bit of work to do, work there. Oops. Um, that shows how much you can zoom in, actually. You can literally get down to every single square that the picture's made up out of. And you can change each one of them individually. Uh, but We'll leave that as that for now. Um, oh, we'll put the we'll put the tint back on, which as I've shown you before, you know, do it as a photo filter, or we'll do it as an overlay, um, which is their solid colour, which will give me a screen of solid colour. We'll want a sepia-ish, yellowish tint, which is something like that. So that's as if I've just put a square of orange cardboard over the image. What do is if we mix it and multiply it. Take the opacity down. There we've got a little bit of the tint back. And the holes have gone. So if we compare that The original image, I know it's a different colour, you can alter the coloration as you can make it red or blue if you want. But that's a lot better than it was. 
Um, so that is basic cloning out of uh, areas which didn't exist, folds, creases, mouldy spots. That is basically how we do it. Alt, pick your area which is what you assume or what should be in the area that's missing and paint it in. And that works with every graphics program worth worth its salt. Um, so we'll give that a try.